Hey guys, uh, we're going to do another 5.2 video and we're working on proportions and rates and unit rates and today our essential question is how can I apply my knowledge of proportions? So we're going to look at some like where do we find this in the real world type stuff and um, through a video lesson sometimes that is hard to show but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a little bit here. So um, make sure you write the date in your notes and make sure you have uh, everything kind of set up and we are going to do an example, so I'm going to call it example one. And before we start this example, uh, we're going to talk about what it's going to be about. So um, hopefully you've had some experience with chocolate chip cookies before, I hope. You know, when you go to the store, you can buy bags of chocolate chips, and there's all different types. There's dark chocolate, semi-sweet. You can get those peanut butter chips, um, lots of options. But if you flip the package over, on the back side looks like this. And this is the directions to making kind of classic chocolate chip cookies, those yummy, ooey gooey cookies that come out of the oven and everybody wants to eat them. And so we're going to take a closer look at that cooking recipe today and uh, kind of dive into it. So for your notes, what we're going to do is on the left side, we're going to talk about uh, the main idea today is a cookie recipe. And where we said example one, we're going to make an ingredients list. One of the first things you're going to see in a recipe is you're going to read what are the ingredients, what goes into the cookies. How do you actually make them? What do, you, what do you need to buy at the store to make these cookies? So we're gonna make a little list in our notes. The first ingredient is you need flour. And specifically for these cookies, you need two and one fourth cup flour. Two and one fourth cup flour. Another thing you're going to need is you need three fourths sugar, three fourths sugar. So we have two and a fourth cup flour. We have three fourths sugar. What else goes into our cookies? Well, we need a lot of the, look at all this stuff. We need one teaspoon, TSP stands for teaspoon of baking soda. We need one teaspoon of salt. We need a, one cup of butter. Oh, that's what makes it taste so good. And we need another one teaspoon of vanilla to get some flavor in there. We also need two eggs and two cups of, of course, chocolate morsels. We need the chocolate chips. So if you need to pause the video to write all of that down, totally go for it. But this is our ingredients list and we're going to take a closer look at it. So I'm going to change my screen here in a minute. But you also need to know that these ingredients make exactly one dozen cookies. So the recipe is for making a dozen cookies. Okay, so we've got our list of ingredients and we know it makes a dozen cookies. Well, what are we going to focus on? How about we start with the two eggs first? Um, if our recipe takes two eggs, then we know at the store we need to buy some eggs. And we're going to turn this into a ratio. We're going to write down that the two eggs makes a dozen cookies. Do you know how many cookies is a dozen? Yeah, 12. Makes 12 cookies. So what I'm going to write is two eggs over 12 cookies. I'm going to make that ratio, that fraction. Two eggs makes 12 cookies. But let's say you want to double the recipe. You want to make a batch for yourself, and then you want to give Mrs. Nira a batch of cookies. That sounds awesome. So we're gonna double the recipe. We're gonna make twice as many cookies. We're gonna basically be multiplying by two. So instead of 12 cookies, we want 24 cookies. So when we double it, we know two times two eggs is four eggs. So we need four eggs and that'll make 24 cookies. And so doubling the recipe is something people do all the time when they're like, oh yeah, I wanna make this recipe, but I got a lot of people coming to my house. I'm gonna double it times it by two, so when we go to take the ingredients list, we gotta double all of the ingredients. So we need four eggs for 24 cookies. All right, so what if we also focused on the flour? The flour is a little more complicated. It's two and a fourth cup flour. So let's focus on that next. So instead of the eggs, think about a measuring cup full of flour. Now this is kind of how you wanna measure your flour. You wanna to top it off and scrape off the top so you get a perfect one cup of flour, but we actually want two and a fourth cups of flour to make our 12 cookies. But remember what we're doing is we're doubling the recipe. So our fraction, this is kind of a crazy fraction, it's like a double fraction, two and one fourth over 12. When we go to double it, we're gonna be multiplying by two. So let's think about what that means. Timesing this recipe by two means we're gonna take those two and one fourth cup flour. Now here, here's a standard measuring cup um, you can t see the flour is all the way up to that one cup line, so we can see that. And we've got to use two and a fourth cups. So here's two cups of flour, and then here's a small, look, I've measured it up to the one fourth line. You see how it's up to the one fourth line there? 
So here's a one fourth cup of flour. So here it is, two and one fourth cups of flour. This is how much you would dump into your bowl to start making your cookies. But then after you make your cookies, we're doubling the batch. So double the recipe means we need another two and one fourth cup flour. So how much flour do we actually have? Well, we got one cup, two cups, three cups, four cups. There are four cups of flours, plus there's a fourth, and then another fourth, so there's two fourths. So when we go to double the recipe, we're actually gonna have four cups of flour and two fourths to make those 24 cookies. There's our ratio. So we know when we double the recipe, we had just gotten this answer earlier, that two eggs makes 12 cookies and four eggs makes 24 cookies. Well, the reason we're doing this is because that's a proportional relationship those two fractions are actually equal to each other. Or like the two and one fourth flour for 12 cookies is the same as four and two fourths flour for 24 cookies. That's a proportion. Proportional relationships are when you have these equal fractions. And uh, it's important to cook with proportions because imagine sometimes you have those people that don't. So I'm gonna cross out the four eggs. Imagine like someone's cooking and they look in the fridge and they're like, oh dang, I don't have four eggs, I only have maybe three eggs. Well, now it's not proportional. And when we go to bake those cookies, something might end up being kind of wrong with them. Have you ever had a, one of those epic failed baking scenarios where you like go to cook the cookies and you think they're all gonna be perfect and fluffy like the package and then they come out like this? This is when you're not using proportions. Something went off with your ingredients list. Maybe not enough eggs, maybe too many eggs, maybe not enough flour, maybe too much flour. So proportions are how we keep the recipe staying the same, even when we wanna double or even triple the batch and make a bunch more cookies. All right, let's look at another example. Let's do example two. We're gonna do a second example here. This time we're gonna talk about cooking mac and cheese. This is some of the, this is a favorite in our house, unfortunately. If you look at the side of the mac and cheese uh, box, they always have the ingredients and the directions. And the ingredients for mac and cheese are super simple. You need water to boil it in, you need butter, and you need milk. So pretty straightforward. Um, so what we're gonna do for our notes is we're gonna write out an ingredients list. So you need to write down ingredients. And the important ingredients are really just that butter and milk. So we got six cups of water to boil it in, a half a tablespoon, T-B-S-P, tablespoon of butter, and three tablespoons of milk. T-B-S-B stands for tablespoon. So this is the main ingredients of making mac and cheese. But um, what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut the recipe in half. We only need a small batch of mac and cheese today. So we are going to have the recipe, cut it in half. So let's focus on the butter. A half a tablespoon of butter. Well, if you go to the store and you buy butter, uh, well, I'll show you a picture of it here in a minute, but we know that the half tablespoon of butter would make you the one package of mac and cheese. But we are cutting everything in half. So half means to divide it by two. We're gonna divide the butter by two and the package by two. Now, here's the butter I was talking about in the store. Usually they, you buy them in sticks. So here's a classic stick of butter. But when you buy your stick of butter, if you turn it over on the side, usually has measuring on it. Have you ever noticed that? So a stick of butter actually has eight tablespoons of butter in it. You can see the little lines it's measuring. One tablespoon, two tablespoon, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we're only gonna focus on that one tablespoon and our recipe for the box and mac and cheese actually calls for half of a tablespoon. So what you would do is you would take your knife and you would cut just a little, basically a sliver of that butter off, a half of a tablespoon, and then you would throw that into your mac and cheese to cook it up. So um, now we're going to have the recipe. So here it is, here's our half tablespoon right here. That's what we would normally cut off to put into our mac and cheese, but we're actually gonna cut that even more in half, which means if we cut that more in half, then we really only are gonna have a fourth a tablespoon of butter. It's getting even smaller to make half a package of mac and cheese. So cutting something in half, cutting a half a tablespoon makes it into a fourth of a tablespoon. And what we know is this is a proportional relationship. This is gonna keep the mac and cheese looking and tasting the same, it's just gonna be a smaller portion of the recipe. All right, so another thing I want you to write in your notes here is I want you to put the word proportions nice and big. And I hope you're kind of gathering from all of this that proportions are really just two equal fractions. Um, and if we want to get fancy about it, we can say ratios. 
two equal ratios, two equal fractions. And what we know is that you find these fractions by either multiplying or dividing. That's what creates these fractions. We aren't adding and subtracting. There's no adding and subtracting happening. It's all through multiplying and dividing. So now I want you to try. And here is your you try problem. You are making Mrs. Near some delicious brownies that she has been because she has been such a nice teacher to you. Aren't you nice? I'm so excited for my brownies. Look at those yummy brownies you're gonna cook up for me. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Your ingredients that you need include a half a cup of sugar. And all, you are going to triple the recipe. You're gonna make triple the brownies. You're feeling really generous. I'm so excited for these brownies. So your job is to figure out if you triple the recipe, how much sugar would you actually need? How much sugar would you need for that tripled recipe? Okay, I want you to pause the video and take your time trying to figure this out. All right, you are unpausing your device at this point and you're ready to check your answer. So let's check it. So a half cup of sugar makes one box of your brownies, but we are tripling. You're gonna times it by three. So now we're gonna be making basically three boxes of brownies. And I'm very excited about this. So here is what a half a cup of sugar looks like in a measuring cup. You can see it up to the halfway mark. What we're gonna do is we're gonna triple that. So we have a half a cup, we're gonna have another half a cup, and then we're gonna have another half a cup. Well, how much is that? Well, a half and a half make a whole, don't they? If you had a half a sugar and then another half a sugar, now you have one whole cup. So it looks like we have one whole cup. There's a half, here's the next half. That makes one cup plus another half a sugar. So one and a half cup sugar is how much you're going to need to make the tripled recipe. And this makes a proportional relationship. These are equal. Your brownies are gonna turn out just as great as they would have if you made one box. Well, they should look the same because you're cooking with proportions. All right, wrapping up this video. Proportions and cooking, things you need to write down. First, doubling, halving, and tripling is kind of a typical thing we do with recipes. A lot of times we need to cut something in half because we don't have that many people eating, or we're doubling and tripling because we have lots of people eating. And if you do not do it proportionally, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Look at this, have you ever seen these? This is a cake, a minion cake that was supposed to be cooked and looked all cute. Look how the actual one turned out. Not exactly like the recipe said. When you don't follow proportional cooking, that's when things happen that make your cakes and your, your recipes kind of turn into a disaster sometimes. Um, things don't bake correctly or things don't taste correctly, so proportions are super important. Uh, all right, guys, we will watch more videos on this. I hope it helped, and I will see you in class. Bye.